Sar Shalom Ministries launches in 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You're watching Star TV. You're watching Star TV. You're watching Star TV. Estás viendo Star TV. Yes, there's gold to be found in the Word of God. Join us live every Sabbath at 1 p.m. Eastern for 15 minutes of golden nuggets from the weekly Torah portion. Gold tried in the fire. So remember, there's gold in them there scrolls. Good afternoon. Today's portion is uh, number 16, Bet Shalak, when he, he let them go. Now the exodus of Israel was an example of the power of God, Almighty Yah. Israel saw with their own eyes what God did in Egypt when Pharaoh let them go with all when he let them go, all these people marching out of the city must have been, they must have been glowing with joy and, and amazement. They didn't know no other life but Egypt. They were afraid, but they saw what God did. So they vacated the premises. They, even some of the natives marched out of the city with Israel, forsaking everything to follow the one true God. I remembered living in the projects with my brothers and I became part of the uh, project jungle. And when my mom remarried, we moved into a, a nice house. We had, we had to act and talk a certain way. I remember bumping heads with my stepdad all the time. I kept thinking, we had it better at the projects, but my family had some, some best times in that house. But there was a time when I wanted to go back to the projects. Now, after four centuries of bondage in Egypt, after 400 years, Egypt was, was all they knew. We have a good God. He is great and greatly to be praised. And, and he knows everything about us. They could have, the, the Israel could have just marched straight through where the Philistines lived to get to the mountains. But God knew Egypt with all their gods made them spiritually weak and afraid. The Lord of hosts led them to the sea now, if, if we have the, the Spirit of God in us, that's the most powerful thing in this world. The Spirit of God in us is the most powerful thing in this world. We will see in our lifetime God's hand, you know, in our lives. Just like the Israel saw the sea separate 
in front of them. And their enemies drawn before them. And they started to sing. They didn't pass out the song books. The song came from their heart. The song of Moses. The 15, 13. He says, I will sing unto the Lord. And all his works. That must have been a very sweet song in Yah's ear. All those men. All those women. All those children. Just singing to the Lord Yahweh. In that moment. In time they were grateful. In love. Comforted. And at rest. Is is. It, it's like a, a glimpse of eternity. Singing, singing is one of one of the two ways in which God's word dwelled in us richly. In Colossians three sixteen, the first the first way is to teach God's ways and His words, and then to sing about God. Deborah had that powerful. Uh, a song with Barak. He, they sang about the um the triumph, their battles. Now Deborah, a leader of Israel, he called she was called a prophetess and a judge, whom God also spoke directly to. Personally, I am so glad that the Lord uses women to do his work. When Deborah was a leader and was leading Israel, the land was at rest for 40 years. I pray that the Lord will bless all our women in leadership, that they may seek the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto them. That's in Matthew 6. 6.33 We will see God uh, I, I read somewhere That in, in Exodus 16.16 16, all, all the letters of the um, Hebrew alphabet Are contained in, in this verse That Israel In this verse Exodus 16.16 16 Was put to work to get their daily bread Manna and they were put to work to live and not die. Now in the New Testament, our Lord and Savior, Jesus, Yahshua, Messiah, our Christ, told the people that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, Matthew 4 and 4. Our daily bread, God's word. And we are, we are put to work, to work out our own salvation, with fear and trembling, Philippians 2.12, we are told to work like the Israelite. Now the manna, they had to gather it. They had to gather the manna and only a certain amount. And on Fridays, double portion for Shabbat. And it was a time-sensitive thing before it spoiled. And they needed to process it, you know, to make it into cakes. And they ate it to live and not die. In the same way, today we gather our daily bread from the Old Testament and the New Testament. And only a certain amount, because some of us are babes and drink milk. And and some of us, we like the hard uh, meat, the spiritual meat. And it's time sensitive because life on earth is, we are... It's short. Life is but a vapor. It's and and, to, and we had to process it to be doers, to the to to have the renewing of the mind to kill the sin, and we have to eat it to live and not die by faith. There is a scientific law that says, for every action, there's a reaction, and some the same law of of give and receive when you hear for every action to give there is a reaction to receive this is in harmony with God's ways 
God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. It's better to receive than to give. The Lord said that. With gratitude and a humble spirit. In John, 1st chapter 12, to those who receive him, he gives power to become the sons of God. There is a there is beauty and joy and happiness and a harmony and love in giving and receiving correctly. If it's, if it's just give and give or just receive and receive, there is no harmony in this. The manner in which we must give and receive, there are certain conditions to nourish us and and so that we can grow spiritually in our lives. We must eat our daily bread, of course. You know, this is the nourishment. And it's of the Lord's life, death, and resurrection. It must be in us, in our members, in, uh, of His Spirit. We are the branches. He's the living vine. We are, we are to bear fruit by His life. In us. And also in Colossians, the whole chapter, the second chapter, it said it tells us that earthly things and spiritual things must be kept separate. Then they, they should become separate. Now Jesus, Yeshua, our Christ, is the bread of life. Now in in um he feeds 5,000. This story is in, in the four Gospels. Matthew 14, Mark 6, Luke 9, and here in John 6. The multitude wanted to keep receiving bread that filled the stomach. Our Lord wanted to give the spiritual bread that filled the soul with strength. The Lord perceived that they would take him by force and make him a king that would feed them what they want. Our Lord does not want this. In Ecclesiastics, there in, in Ecclesiastic, you, you read that in, in chapter 1, verse 9, that there is nothing new under the sun. We live in a place that wants to give us stuff. Things that are easy on the eyes that will capture and the attention, our attention all day long. That that uh, we 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 can have music and words that are enjoyable to our ears that rock a person back and forth. And some of the foods available that are delicious and the smells that are available, that are wonderful to keep us satisf satisfied for a certain amount of time. These things will be until our Lord returns. They're not going to change. Now our Lord, he says in verse 26 in the same chapter, it says, labor not for the meat which perish, but for that meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him he had, he had God the Father sealed. The spiritual daily bread, meat, that the Father, Yah, set his seal, which endures, it, uh, endures forever eternal life. Now the Lord, when, when the Lord came into and led me out of Egypt, never to return, the Pharaoh, you know, through through the uh, works of, uh, of of Yah, he let them go. The enemy. He will let go when, when you're living in darkness, when the Lord Jesus comes into your life and we march into that marvelous light. But like Israel worked hard to get through 
We also have to work through this. And I want to encourage you this afternoon to work hard, to give and receive, to learn how to give and receive God's way. Jesus didn't receive that portion, that position as king that the multitude offered him. There is no harmony, no happiness in this. God is good. The one and true God is on our side. And he will, he, he will supply all our needs. We need to learn how to give and re- receive a right. And, and that's what the portion of, of, of this um, Torah portion is. Is that when, when, he was, he, when he let go, we, had to le- we have to learn how to give and receive and work our salvation. In Jesus' name, thank you. Shalom Aleichem and peace be unto you and to yours. Welcome again to another 10 minutes of gleaning in the word of truth. Ha the bar Yahuwah, the word of Yah. I wanted to share just another reminder that Yah sees and knows what we're going through. He knows our struggles. He knows our sicknesses, our afflictions, and he bottles every tear. Saints, it won't be much longer. Though it seems like these Various trials and afflictions will never end. Remember our teaching. Time is only temporary. This too shall pass. Trouble will not last always. We'll be reading from Habakkuk chapter 1 verses 1 through 5. The name Habakkuk comes from the Hebrew number 2265, meaning to embrace, to grab hold of, receive. Verse 1 says, The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. O Lord, how long will I cry, and thou not Shema, not hear? Even crying out to you of violence, and thou will still not save. The word is Yeshah, 3467 in the Hebrew, meaning deliver, free, help, or avenge. Even in this violence that we are seeing, why won't you help? Why won't you free us? Why won't you avenge or deliver us, liberate us from this evil, from this trouble, from this suffering? Verse three, why dost thou show me iniquity? Iniquity is the word aven, the number 205 in Hebrew. It means, why are you showing me this trouble, this sorrow, this wickedness? and cause me to behold grievance. For spoiling and violence are all before me, and there are that rise up strife and contention. Verse 4, therefore the Torah is slacking. It is weak, basically non-existent. It's not here. It's not embraced. And judgment does not go forth, for the wicked does come past the righteous. They're surrounding us. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. Now here's where it's powerful. Behold ye among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told to you. This verse shows that God is going to do something marvelous in our eyes, right before us. And it's going to be so powerful that we won't even believe it, let alone the people around us. This verse shows us that God is seeing, he sees and he knows all about us. He sees the ways of this world and he's going to do something that's gonna be so marvelous, so extraordinary, so wild, so bizarre 
that we will not believe it, let alone the world. This lets us know he already has a plan. And one day, when the appointed time of vengeance comes, people are going to be so mind blown that they will not believe what's happening even before their very eyes. This also rings true when God does something supernatural in our lives. You might try and share a personal miracle and experience with someone, and yet they still can't quite grasp the impossible move that God did in your life. But you can, and ultimately, that's all that truly matters. You had that personal experience. You've seen God's hand move in an impossible way. And saints, if you have that type of testimony, when God moved like that in your life, never forget it. And always remember, if he did it before, he will and can do the impossible again. You serve the God of impossibilities. I mean, after all, he made all of this, everything you've ever seen and known, all creation, both visible and invisible, by a mere word. Let there be. And he speaks that word to us in our temples, in our lives, in our minds, in our bodies, in our relationships, in our marriages, in our families, in our homes. Let there be a miracle. Let there be an impossibility made possible. From A to Z, from the olive to the Tav, you fill in the blank. Whatever that need may be, Hayah, the I am, is able. But to the worldly, the carnal, unbelieving mind, that's impossible. Let them continue in their faith in the Big Bang Theory and evolution. You've had that personal experience that no man, that no science can ever take away. You've had that close encounter with the creator of all. And like Paul, you are persuaded and you know that God is able. When I read this in Habakkuk, I could not help but think about Psalm 34. Verse 17 through 22 says, the righteous cry out and the Lord shamas, the Lord hears. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. He saves the contrite in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He guards all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate righteousness shall be consumed. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Beloved, trust in our heavenly Father. He sees us, he hears us, and he will send the Deliverer, our salvation, Yahshua, the Defender of the Saints. And as you all know, this verse made reference to Yahshua. He guards his bones, none of them shall be broken. This was a revelation of Yahshua, which of course led me to the book of the revelation of Yahshua. The last few words, which I view as part of God's answer in the book of Habakkuk. Revelation chapter 22, verse 20 concludes with, Amen, even so come. Lord Yahshua, Lord Jesus. Jesus is the Greek number 2424, which comes from the Hebrew 3190, Yehoshua or Joshua, meaning Yah is deliverance. He is our salvation. Even so, come our salvation, Yah, our deliverer, our savior. And finally, verse 21, the grace of of our Lord Yahshua, Jesus the Christ, be with you all. Amen. And the Israel of Yah said, Amen. Our God has not forgotten us. We are not going through this alone. He sees and he knows. And one day, as he promised, he is going to do such a work before us that even we will not believe. Glory to Yah. Shalom, peace, and patience. Be with you all. Remember, endure until the end. Salvation is coming. This has been 10 Minutes of Gleaning in the Word. Shalom. You're
Talking Star TV. Shalom and good Sabbath to you, those that have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. You know, I was thinking about bondage, how so many of us are struggling in various areas, even after being saved, even after coming out of Egypt, which remind me of the saying, you can take the child out of Egypt, but there's a bit of a struggle trying to take Egypt out of the child. Like Paul said in Romans chapter 7, verse 24, O wretched man that I am, not that I used to be, but that I am, even now, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Verse 25 says that I thank God through Yahshua HaMoshiach, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Now, I'm not talking about willful sin. I'm talking about those who are struggling. As the scripture has said, if you say you have no sin, then you are a liar and the truth is not in you. If we have no issue, then why do we need to pray our daily prayer of forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us? If we are made perfect on our own, then why would we need to come boldly before the throne of grace to find help in time of trouble? Why will we need Yahshua to forever live to make intercession for the saints? Again, Brother Paul, I thank God through Yahshua, the Messiah, who reminds me that Yah is my deliverer, even from myself. His hand, his arm is not too short to reach out to the deepest pit to save me or you. And as that psalmist sung, his blood has not lost its power. Yahshua, Yah is our deliverer. He will save his people from their Egypt, from their bondage, from their sins. This reminded me of the very first commandment that God made on Mount Sinai. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am Yah, your Elohim, your God, your mighty one, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Have we understood the power of this very first commandment? Yah says that he is our mighty one, our Elohim. And yes, we understand the difference between El and Elohim Elohim representing plural, meaning he is our mighty one, no matter what the situation is. We need healing. He's the God that heals us. We need sanctifying. He's the God that sanctifies us. We need peace. He's the God of peace. He is all in all. I am that I am. Whatever you need, Yah says, I am. And this I am has brought you out. He says, I brought you out of the world. I brought you out of Egypt. Egypt represents the world. It represents all kinds of bondage, all kinds of earthly limitations. This is why when we have God, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He said he has overcome the world. Therefore, we are more than conquerors. Why? Because the conqueror, the overcomer dwells in us. I am your God, which have brought you out of your bondage, of your struggle, of your chains, of your sin. Now, note the word brought. That means to bring you. He's carrying us through it all. 
If he promised that I'm going to bring you out, then guess what? He will bring you out. Will it be today? Will it be tomorrow? Will it be next week? Yah's will be done because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the Aleph and the Tav. He's the first and the last, and he handles everything in the middle. Remember, it was 40 years. It was a 40 year journey for Israel to make it to the promise. And during that time, some things had to be cut off, just like what we talked about during last week's discussion. Yah says, I have brought you out. Just like he told Paul, my grace carries you, Paul. My grace is sufficient. Brought is the Strong's Hebrew number 3318. Yatsah. It means to deliver, to bring out. Listen to this. To be risen, to come forth. When I read that, to be risen, to come forth, my thoughts went instantly to the renewed covenant. John chapter 11 and verse 43. When Yahshua brung Lazarus out of the grave. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Now, when you look at this and understand what we just read, Yatsa, what Yahshua would have said was Lazarus, Yatsa, rise up, come forth. Because I have brought you out. For Yah is the resurrection and the life. Yah has delivered. Yah has saved. He has risen us from the dead. Lazarus, come forth. Yetzah. Now we already know that Lazarus' Hebraic name, the original Hebrew pronunciation of his name, comes from the Hebrew Strong's 499. Eleazar, which means Baruch Hashem, which means God has helped. What is that saying? God has already helped us. He has already brung us out. Yah is our Elohim, our mighty one, who has Yatsad, who has brought us out of all forms of Egypt, of all forms of bondage, and freed us from every chain, every yoke. We are delivered. He has brung us out. He has said to us, come forth. We are not in the same place we used to be. We are not in bondage, even though we may think we are. Like I said before, we can take the child out of Egypt, but you have trouble getting Egypt out of the child. What we are experiencing are the remnants of where we used to be, the memories of where we used to be, phantoms of where we used to be. We used to be in sin, but we are no longer in sin. We have been delivered by Yah's help. We have been set free. We are experiencing those little things that want to cling on to us, which we have to shake off with the power of the word. Yahshua said that he is the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in him, though you used to be in Egypt, you shall live. He will raise us up from where we were. Romans 11, 26 through 27. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion, the deliverer, that's Yahshua, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. That's the whole house reunited, no longer divided, but made one in the hand of the deliverer. Verse 27, for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. And that's exactly what Yahshua has done. He has taken away our Egypt. He has taken away our chains. He has taken away our bondage. Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, Yahshua, for he, Yah, shall, Yesha, save his people from their sin, from their bondage. 
Yah made a promise. I am Yah, your mighty one. Yah has brought us out, Yetzah, from our past, raised us up from the house of bondage, the house of Egypt, the house of sin. Again, what we are experiencing is the debris left over from the deserts of Egypt. You are not depressed. You are not bound. He has set us free. John 8 and 36. Therefore, if the son makes you free, free from Egypt, you shall be free indeed. What we are experiencing is what John eleven forty four 44 calls grave clothes, our past, as it is written. And he that was dead, talking about Lazarus, came forth, yet saw, bound, hand and foot with what? Grave clothes, the bondage that he was in, a memory of his past. And his face was bound about with a napkin. And look at what Yeshua says. And Yeshua said unto them, what? Loose him and let him go. That's our past. That's that junk that think it has power over you. No, it does not. Greater is he that's in you. We can overcome the things we think that we are struggling in. Why? Because Yah has set us free. Yah said, I have saved you. I have brought you out. I have called you forth out of Egypt, out of your bondage, out of your struggle. You can overcome because Yahshua has overcome. You can rise up because Yahshua, the son, has set you free. And as he said, loose him and let him go. All that past, all those chains that think they have you, they don't have you. That's just the grave clothes. That's just memories of your past. Shake them off, loose him and let him go. Because Yah is your God. He have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. He has set you free and no mighty one, no lowercase g has any power over you. Let me finish. Look at verse three. You shall have no other mighty one, no other Elohim before me. Now look at this. When we look at the word me, it's the Hebrew number 6440, panim, meaning face, Yah's face. When have you seen the face of the Father? Let's keep going. Yah is saying, you shall have no other gods before my face. What is that saying? Let's investigate some more because it's going to bless you. When we look at the word before, is the Hebrew number 5921, al, which means beside, before. Now listen, in addition to, or above, or on account of, or for the sake of, or because of. Let me put it to you this way. You shall have no other gods because of my face. You shall have no other gods for the sake of my face. You shall have no other gods on account of my face. But wait a minute. We're not allowed to look at God face to face. Panav, panav. Exodus chapter 33 and verse 20. And he said to Moses, Thou cannot see my face, my panav, same word, for there shall no man see me and live. The whole verse is about Moses crying out to the Lord, wanting to see his glory. Exodus 33, 19 through 21 says, this is God responding back to Moses. And he said, I will make my goodness pass before thee and I will proclaim the name of Yah before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Verse 20. And he said, thou cannot see my panav for there shall no man see me and live. Verse 21. Here it comes. 
And Yah said, Behold, look, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And we know who that rock is. That rock that followed them was Moshiach, was Christ. But he said, we shall not bring any mighty one before his face. Well, what is that mighty one? Depression, sin, some type of yoke, some type of affliction. Yah says, you shall have no other mighty ones before my face or for the sake of my face, for the sake of Yahshua, the face of the father. John 14 and 9. This is Philip asking Yahshua to show them the father. Yahshua says, have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me has seen the father. So when we look at Yahshua's face, we are seeing the face of the father. Exodus 20 and 3. You shall have no other mighty one for the sake of my face. That is his son, Yahshua. He is our mighty one. He is stronger than any other lowercase g that ever attempts to hold any bondage over us. So when God says that he has brought us out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, guess what? That means that he has already done it, Paul. That's why he said, my grace is sufficient. It's already been done. Yahshua, the face of God, the panav of God, the lamb slain before the foundation of the world, the remedy made, the price paid before the sin of Adam and Eve was ever made. So guess what? Yah has already delivered you. Yah has already brought you out. Yah has already raised you up. Listen to John 17, 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these, my disciples, that includes you. These are in the world and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name. You hear that? Those whom thou has given me, saints, the father himself, the father of power is keeping us. That's why he said, I am your mighty one. No other power is greater. First Peter one and five says, we are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Saints, this is why we can say numbers chapter six, verse 22 through 27. And Yah spoke to Moses saying, speak unto Aaron and unto his son saying, on this wise shall you bless the children of Israel saying unto them, are you ready for this? Yah bless you and keep you. Who's your keeper? Yah himself is keeping you. Watch out now. Yah make his panav, his face shine upon you. You hear that? That's because Yahshua is in you and his face. It is his face that goes before you. That's why because of the face of Yahshua that dwells upon you, no chain, no yoke, no bondage, no struggle can stand before your presence. Because we walk around in the spirit like Moses did when he had that light shining upon his face. That was a foreshadow of the face of Yahshua being upon us. Yah, make his face to shine upon you. I want you to notice too that there are three phases to this blessing, which Yah made himself. This wasn't written by Moses. This was the word of Yah himself, his instruction. Number one says, Yah bless you and keep you. That's the father. Yah make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. There's the son. Yah lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom. There's the Holy Spirit. And we understand all is one. Yah can be a thousand different things. He is what he is. He will be whatever he will be. 
Yah is saying, whatever it takes to save you, that's what he'll do. Because he made a promise and his word cannot return void. He is not a man that he would lie. Yah said, I will save my people from their sin. Then guess what? He will save his people from their sin. He's the salvation. He's the deliverance. He's the hope of Israel. Exodus 20. I am Yah, your mighty one, which have brought you out. There's Yetzah of the land of Egypt. Folks, whatever your Egypt is, Yah has brought you out. He has Yetzah. Eleazar Yetzah. God has helped to raise us up, to bring us out, to deliver us. We shall have no other lowercase g-o-d, no other so-called mighty one because of his son, the face of the father. All that was just in the very first commandment. Yah himself declares that he is your God. He is your mighty one. And because his face is shining upon you, no other so-called mighty one, whatever that mighty one might be, can stand before your presence. Because greater is he that's in you, the face of Yahshua, which shines before you, whom you are covered in his righteousness. For you have put on Christ, the solid rock in which you stand. Nothing of this world is able to hold you down or to hold you back. Yah himself is keeping you. Yiverechecha abaya veyishmerecha. The Lord bless you and keep you. Ya'er abaya panavelecha vichuneka. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yesa abaya panavelecha veyasim lecha shalom. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom. Bashim Yahshua HaMoshiach Hasa Shalom In the name of Yahshua, the Prince of Peace, Amen. And those who have the victory, shout Amen. Shalom Aleichem, peace be with you and yours. During these uncertain times, coupled with the inability to fellowship together at our place of worship. It can really take a toll on our weekly contributions, especially for a small fellowship like ours. And that's why I wanted to say thank you for your faithfulness. Though some have turned to the practice of out of sight, out of mind, God has kept your heart in favor with us. Toda Rava, thank you very much for remembering Sar Shalom Ministries with your continued contributions. Your continued faithfulness assures that we will have a place of fellowship to return to. Contrary to what some may believe, we still must continue to pay our rent, even though we're not there. So from all of us at Sar Shalom Ministries in Garfield, Ohio, thank you for your continued support. Thank you for your faithfulness. In times like these, it will not be forgotten. As always, thank you for your prayers, your patience and support as we venture through this new medium on our YouTube channel. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you real soon. Shalom.